series of podcasts, Industrial IoT Edge Insights. I'm Chantel Polsonetti. I'm a Vice President here at ARC. And we'd like to delve into the further topic of market dynamics and market uh, drivers and inhibitors in this episode too. Our first episode focused on defining the industrial IoT edge. So folks are certainly encouraged to refer to that for any questions uh, regarding how ARC defines the industrial edge. But we do know that the edge of industrial internet enables architectures is becoming increasingly important. And we also know that it's largely due to its often critical role in determining the success of digital transformation strategies. Initially focused on delivering timely, clean data to cloud-based applications, the industrial IoT edge has emerged as an entirely new ecosystem within the overall enterprise architecture. So why is that? Well, ARC has spent uh, quite a bit of time since the uh, advent of the industrial IoT term itself, looking at both the overall uh, impact of the industrial IoT as well as the edge itself as it has become more prominent in recent years. So what's driving this increase focused on the industrial IoT edge? Well, certainly one is the focus on and delivery of concrete business outcomes via digital transformation strategies rather than pursuit of technology for its own sake. Now, as industrial IoT uh, solutions or strategies have evolved, particularly those that involve enterprise clouds, customers and suppliers alike are increasingly uh, cognizant of the importance of the edge in achieving these desired business outcomes, particularly as far as it relates to pre-processing of data and not sending of the fire hose of data from the edge directly into the enterprise cloud. Now, as part of this, we know that edge computing solves some real problems with cloud-based industrial internet solutions. Those are particularly true in areas such as latency, security, and distrust. So we find that solutions architects, excuse me, solution architects now rely on the edge not just for the cloud integration capabilities, but also as a solution to the cl uh, cloud shortcomings in these areas. I would also add um, that with the recent uh, focus on analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning at the edge, that it's increasingly obvious that these data intensive applications make sense at the edge rather than sending all the data to enterprise clouds. So some of the other drivers that we see behind uh, growth in the edge market include the migration from proof, proof of concept or POCs to production in major subsegments. Now, several industries uh, have some experience uh, under their wings as far as it relates to uh, proving out the business advantages of adopting the industrial IoT as a whole. And so we see a lot of migration in those early adopter segments from uh, basically pilots to production. We also see increased focus and uh, offerings from the enterprise cloud providers, which we'll be discussing in further episodes as well. But they have really focused on the edge due to some of the issues or some of the advantages that I've already mentioned in terms of what the edge can do for uh, cloud-based business improvement applications. We also have emergence of the multi-tiered edge in response to the requirements that are increasing due to the digital transformation stories, and we'll have a whole episode dedicated to that. And we also see in the context of what ARC calls Industrial IoT Edge 2.0, characteristic of this 2.0 phase is a real increased emphasis on ease of use, self-service, turnkey operation, and basically making the solutions easier to use and apply and scale. Also, there's a much... Um, Wide, more widespread availability of edge hardware, software, and solutions due to the spike of investments targeted in this, in this space by both hardware and software suppliers as well as solution providers. And then there's also the fact that um, you know within the overall generic Internet of Things, industrial applications are a very specific and promising target due to the, its unique value proposition in industry that we'll talk about a little more. But let's talk about the uh, offsetting factors as it relates to uh, potential for growth 
in industrial IoT edge market. Certainly security is the number one issue. Customers are concerned about uh, you know, providing access to their installations um, you know, for the uh, potential of cyber attacks. Another inhibitor is what we see in our practice is when customers pursue industrial IoT applications just for technology's sake. Instead, one of the first things that we start with when advising customers is to emphasize and document and quantify the desired outcomes from the industrial IoT installation. Certainly, we know we're in industrial automation, and that in, in itself, it, um, part of its profile is a very slow pace of change due to established uh, installations and processes. And sort of concurrent with that is the question as to the adoption rate for cloud computing, industrial IoT, and the associated edge computing capabilities. Some of these concepts are just foreign to some of our customer base. And I mentioned before that some customers are migrating from pilots to production, but it does take a while in industry um, for, you know, to go from sort of the uh, skunk works into real production installations that drive volume. And the nature of the value chain uh, also basically slows down the adoption timeline. So the example here would be a supplier comes out with a new solution, whether hardware or software. Due to the nature of the value chain, there's typically third parties involved. So the supplier brings their um, proposed solution to a solution provider or OEM or system integrator partner, some other uh, member of the value chain who takes their time to prove out the solution and then in turn has to turn around and prove it out to the end customer. So this multi-tiered nature of the value chain can extend the timeline for adoption and, and consequently the growth potential. We also have channel issues as it relates to, uh, particularly on discrete automation side in the United States, where there's a heavy reliance on third party electrical distributors. And so, for example, for sales of PLCs and whether or not that channel has the ability to assist customers with uh, the, the integration and deployment um, capabilities required for installing industrial IoT edge applications. In some cases, there's a push versus pull uh, issue and that customers may not realize that, you know, that they can benefit uh, from industrial IoT installations and therefore it's, it's the supplier basically trying to uh, push their solution into customer installations. And also, of course, the diversity of the edge ecosystem. There are just uh, many players coming together to serve these edge applications with a real diversity, real wide variety of core competencies that we'll discuss later when we talk about different uh, suppliers. There's also uh, device and application management at scale is uh, very difficult in some installations whereby we take a, a POC that's really proved out the value proposition of an, of an industrial IoT installation, but then the ability to scale that across, you know, the, the, the huge number of potential uh, installations within a given factory, within a given company, region, etc. So that scalability remains an issue. And then as I mentioned before, uh, one of the characteristics of industrial IoT Edge 2.0 is improved ease of use, self-service, and turnkey. But, you know, particularly um, when we first started researching this topic, you know, the reliance on data scientists all the way down into the OT level, you know, that that can, can prove to be a real uh, inhibitor to industrial IoT adoption. So as I mentioned before, uh, one of the reasons that uh, the market as a whole, even beyond industrial automation, uh, views our industry as a real uh, hotbed for industrial IoT op, uh, adoption is due to some of the real unique characteristics of our industries and how that translates into the potential for industrial IoT adoption. So certainly when we're, we're trying to you know, drive home the, the message that uh, we have to focus on business outcomes and not technology just as a means to an end. So for manufacturers, adoption of industrial IoT really does have an incremental value proposition in areas like reduced uh, downtime, and maximum equipment utilization as it relates to industrial IoT, 
or the flexibility and reconfiguration capabilities associated with Industry 4.0. Manufacturing also represents a huge opportunity as it relates to the ability to retrofit the legacy installed base and bring in data that was not previously accessed via or for these um, cloud-based enterprise applications that can use that data to the ends of business improvement. There are also numerous basic incremental organic opportunities where even in uh, greenfield or new projects, we see the number of sensors uh, employed in a given installation is really um, escalating due to the ability to use that data from those sensors to drive business improvements. Then there's some other interesting um, you know, market um, transformations like where uh, we see people going from uh, selling products to selling services or selling outcomes. So probably one of the best examples is um, from General Electric's Industrial Internet um, original um, advocation where they talked about instead of selling jet engines, actually selling thrust, which represents a whole different uh, business model. And the industrial IoT in that context can also represent uh, difference or migration from capital expenditures to operational expenditures where you're, when you're buying a product it's a, or a machine, it's a capital expense, but if you're buying a service or an outcome, it's an operational expense. And as far as the edge is concerned, uh, we certainly know that the industrial customer is more cautious about the role of the cloud in their installations. So bringing more of this functionality to the edge lets, it, lets them keep it more within um, the realms of, of their responsibilities. And also finally, um, on the driver's side, as we know, uh, COTS-based microprocessors as well as standard operating systems are migrating further and further down on the architecture and we're seeing a lot of you know, devices that used to have proprietary electronics adopt, adopting uh, standard microprocessors like say an Intel or an ARM and really that, um, that COTS capability is extending further into the architecture making uh, data processing and connectivity available further and further down. Now some of the uh, offsetting factors as it relates to industry is certainly the customer recognition of the IoT value proposition. I mentioned before that some customers simply aren't uh, aware or educated as it relates to what the industrial IoT could mean in their installations in terms of business improvement. The uh, cloud, the adoption rates for cloud industry 4.0 and in the industrial in general are wild cards as it relates to uh, industrial automation. Also the characteristics of industrial installations which makes them attractive in some ways also presents some challenges particularly as it relates to issues like availability of power in remote installations or like geo or ge geographically specific infrastructure limitations in areas like telecom and connectivity. And then of course as, as we know industrial automation is much slower uh, to change relative to say consumer or retail or finance or other potential uh, market segments for the IoT in general. So we mentioned the, the pace of uh, proof of concept to production, the value chain co characteristics, the channel expertise, certainly installed based inertia. This is particularly true in process industries where some installations have been in place for 20 or 30 years. They've already been fine tuned over time and there's certainly no uh, inclination to uh, rip and replace. We also have uh, in some of our customer installations we've had uh, you know issues regarding basically the personnel are resistant to change or, or concerned about security but the whole people issue is certainly paramount one that's become increasingly apparent in recent years. And then finally uh, there is the customer skill set. We talked about it in the channel before but this is also true um, in industry and as to whether particularly um, older workers have a skill set uh, conducive to uh, industrial IoT strategies but with the younger workers who are more familiar um, with both the computing and the networking technology just from uh, personal use and exposure uh, that is changing somewhat. And then finally in echoing a, a concept I mentioned a minute ago there are significant challenges in scaling analytics in particular 
from uh, proof of concept to production and scaled capabilities across the enterprise. Now within uh, industrial IoT itself, uh, not only does industrial automation have specific characteristics that make it really a tremendous uh, growth potential market um, under the industrial, under the, excuse me, Internet of Things umbrella, but within industry or industrial automation itself, there are uh, numerous different distinct market segments that have their own uh, characteristics that makes it not a single homogenous segment. So for industrial automation, we have discrete or factory automation versus process, which represents a lot of differences as it relates to some of the characteristics I mentioned earlier. Things like installed base inertia, um, you know, ability to rip and replace, uh, those kind of things. Utilities and smart grid, T and D is a very big application, excuse me, transmission and, and distribution and electric power. And those have, has, that segment has its own uh, requirements. Others, telecom, intelligent transportation like rail, smart cities, etc. But the thing we're trying to emphasize here is that even within industry as a, as a sub-segment of the overall Internet of Things, industry itself has numerous sub-segments within it, each of which is pursuing different value propositions, different motivations behind pursuit of the industrial IoT, different standards and protocols that relate to issues such as um, connectivity as well as uh, certifications. And then they're also typically served by different suppliers and ecosystem participants. And in many cases from what we've seen have different edge computing philosophies Again, uh, with mobile and remote uh, asset, uh, you know, installations being some of the primary criteria there. So that is uh, the end of um, this episode two. We want to just give you a flavor of what we see of uh, the market inhibitors, excuse me, uh, drivers and inhibitors, as well as some things that make the industrial automation marketplace unique. And thank you very much for your time. And please look forward to further episodes.